Holocene Extinction you got Hi, I'm Mr. Olivier and I'm going to talk to you about extinction. Extinction is a major problem in our world today and as you can see here at the Museum of Nature in Ottawa, we have a passenger pigeon and the great hawk. Two examples of animals that became extinct because of humans. So in this video, we'll learn more about extinction. Today, nature is declining globally at unprecedented rates with serious impacts on all people around the world. Biodiversity and nature's contributions to people are our common heritage and humanity's most important life support. Presently, up to one million species are now threatened. Extinction is not a new phenomenon. There have been five major extinctions in Earth's long history. These extinctions were mainly due to environmental changes or cosmic impacts. More recently, humans have played a significant role in extinctions over the past 50,000 years. Some of the strongest evidence for extinction as a result of human activities comes from islands. Moas were large, flightless birds endemic to New Zealand. They weighed over 200 kilograms. Moas became extinct about 500 to 600 years ago. Bones at archaeological sites indicate that the first human colonists hunted moas for food, and they may have killed them off in just a few decades. We will visit the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago to see some of the most recent extinctions due to human ignorance. Here's a skeleton of the great auk, a flightless seabird that went extinct as a result of overhunting and habitat loss. Here is the Labrador duck. The last known sighting occurred in Elmira, New York. Passenger pigeon. The last known passenger pigeon, Martha, lived at the Cincinnati Zoo until her death in 1914. It went extinct as a result of overhunting. Here is the Carolina parakeet, the only native parrot species in the United States. Heath hen, a small wild fowl. It was a relative of the prairie chicken. Now here are some displays at the Museum of Natural History in London, England. Here we have a model of the dodo. It was a flightless relative of pigeons and doves. Predators were introduced to their island of Mauritius. Here we have another great auk. This is a mounted specimen of the bird. This is a huia, a species of New Zealand wattle bird. The Chinese paddlefish was native to the Yangtze River and could reach up to seven meters in length. This one is preserved in the Museum of Natural History, London. It is extinct because of overfishing and dam constructions. Thalassine, also known as the Tasmanian tiger, was the world's largest marsupial carnivore. Habitat loss is the primary cause of extinction today. Other causes include habitat changes, over-exploitation of wildlife, the introduction of harmful non-native species, pollution, and the spread of diseases. Hi everybody, this is Joel Sartori. Joel Satori is an award-winning National Geographic photographer, speaker, and conservationist. Joel is the founder of the Photo Arc, an effort to document species before they disappear forever. 
I'm on the road all the time for the photo arc now. In fact, I am in Portugal right now. Uh, and I am shooting for the arc. I'm shooting rare birds, uh, insects, aquatic animals, you name it. As of May 1st, 2023, Joel has photographed 13,907 species. Um, this is the photo arc set up right here. This is it. Let's see if the flashes work. Ooh, look at that. Wow. Flash. So we would put small animals in this box. Larger animals we do in big enclosures. We're going to go on to the Lisbon Zoo day after tomorrow. Um, the goal is to have every species in captivity photographed before I die. I'm 55 now. I've been doing this 12 years. We have about 8,000 species and we want to get to about 15,000 because that's what the world has in captivity, we think at the world zoos, aquariums, private rehab centers, and uh, private, breeder, private breeders. So we think that we can get there, and really the goal is to show the public what biodiversity looks like at this point in time. There's still time to save so many species, but we won't really do it if we keep going the way we have been. We have to save forests to regulate our rainfall that we get in the areas where we know how to grow crops. We have to save pollinating, pollinating insects like bees and even flies to bring us fruits and vegetables, if you want to think of it selfishly. But the bottom line for me is, I think every animal has a basic right to exist, don't you? They're all worthy. They're, they're worth as much as I am. So what are we doing to stop this extinction crisis? In December 2022, the UN Biodiversity Conference, known as COP15, concluded with a landmark agreement to protect 30% of the world's land coastal areas and oceans. Chaired by China and hosted by Canada, COP15 resulted in the adoption of the Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework, the GBF, on the last day of negotiations. The GBF aims to address biodiversity loss, restore ecosystems, and protect indigenous rights.